Hey everyone, I'm Jeremy Safran and this is Kiko News. Now, the latest job report has taken the markets by surprise. U.S. employers adding the most workers in a year. 353,000 new positions in January and wages saw an increase as well, signaling a strong labor market. Now, this development has led to a surge in Treasury yields, a sharp rise in the U.S. dollar, and adjustments in expectations for the Federal Reserve's interest rate decisions. With these shifts, the likelihood of rate cuts, rate cuts rather, in the near term has diminished, affecting forecasts for 2024. This robust labor market movement contrasts with the tech sector, where high earnings persist despite widespread layoffs, raising questions about a potential market bubble. As we digest these figures and their potential impact on equities, we turn to Ed Batowski, managing partner at Chapwood Investments, also a former Morgan Stanley executive, and now handles wealth management for some high individual, high net worth individuals. Some names you might even recognize, but we won't mention that. Hi, Ed, thanks for being on with us today. Well, great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, you know, with the job market showing unexpected strength and wages on the rise, uh, what impacts might this have on the Federal Reserve's interest rate decisions going forward? Yes. Yeah, so, so the Fed will increase interest rates if, in fact, the economy is showing a lot of strength. And these numbers, a lot of these jobs are government jobs. You have to remember mm -hmm. the government has been hiring a lot of people. So there's probably going to be some revisions to this number, but this number was a blowout number compared to what people were expecting. So if you have a strong economy, you're going to see interest rates start to rise and that's going to be done to slow the economy down. Right now, everyone's expecting interest rates to drop as a result of a slower inflationary numbers. So you have kind of a battle between the strength of the economy and the strength of inflation. And up until recently, inflation has been winning the day. So inflation has been coming down. So people are expecting interest rates to drop. This could put a little bit of a uh, you know, kind of a halt to some of that thinking. Uh, my, my personal feeling is that we're going to see a rate cut in April. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, this these job numbers, if they continue to be very strong, could put an end to my, you know, that April number. It could be June or July. Right. And I mean, you mentioned it. There's a lot of employment happening in the government sector. Uh, I'm curious, Sil, because as we look at these new job numbers, how do they align with the tech sectors? You know, I mean, we got high earnings happening over there and huge, huge layoffs. So is there some type of a disconnect here? Is there a bubble that we don't know about? Well, there, there was a tremendous amount of hiring in the tech sector. I mean, anybody coming out of grad school was all going to the tech sector. So right. they had a huge uh, you know, buildup of employment. And then they started to really look at their balance sheet and start to cut, just like looking at Meta. Meta had to have a real you know, kind of you know, look in the mirror as to what they were doing and where they were spending money. And they started cutting positions in Google and Apple and everybody in the Silicon Valley you know, was looking to not so much expand, but to find a way to cut their balance sheet down. And that's what happened. So I think you see kind of a, you know, kind of a contradiction there because you're seeing employment grow. You're seeing a cut in high tech where there's a lot of profits. Yeah. You know, it's interesting as we look towards equities here, you're, you're talking a little bit about, uh, you know, Meta and we looked at it yesterday. They denounced huge, huge earnings, something that was a little bit surprising, as well as a dividend. So uh, where are you putting the money here, Ed? I mean, when we think about where we're putting, you know, buying stocks and buying equ equities right now, is it towards those, those huge uh, evaluated companies like Meta, or are you avoiding those? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, what I do is I manage money for people. So I have to really be mindful, not just go with what all the maxes are doing, and if you look at the Magnificent Seven, they're all tremendously overpriced based on expected earnings right now. Uh, so I'm avoiding the Magnificent Seven and I'm doing something really boring. I'm investing in utility stocks. Uh, utilities have come under a lot of pressure last year as interest rates rose. And the idea is that interest rates are going to start to drop and you're going to see natural gas prices have dropped as well. And as a result of nat gas prices dropping, you're going to see a windfall profit coming into these utilities because they generate a lot of their energy from natural gas and coal. So there's going to be a profit, you know, unspoken or unknown profit to a lot of these utility companies. So I'm buying utilities and 
Uh, I think that's going to be a really nice 12 to 14 percent total return for 2024. Okay, before we get into utilities, because there's lots that we can talk about, including some specific equities there, I'm curious, going back to the Magnificent Seven, tell me why you're avoiding them. I mean, the S&P seems to be doing quite well. Also, automakers like Tesla. Well, what, what's your plan here, and why are you avoiding? Is it just based on evaluations too high? Yeah, the valuations are just way too high. Um, and that's that's the number one reason that I'm doing it. I don't it's not like I don't like these companies. I just don't like them at these price points. And you talk mm. about Tesla. I think Tesla is a nightmare waiting to happen. I think that the EV market has been overdone. Uh, I think that the you're going to start seeing Ford and General Motors, you know, come into play, and you're going to see them having, you know, their their distribution arm is far greater than what Tesla or uh, uh, Neo and any of the other EV makers are. So I think you're going to see a, a huge a divergence from Tesla. Uh, and they're trying to bring their prices lower. They're, they're doing a lot of things that a company would be doing when they're trying to save costs. And I just don't think Tesla is going to expand. Like you look at Rivian, and Rivian's a fantastic company, uh, but they've had to pivot what they were doing, and they're going more into trucks now. So, mm -hmm. But the infrastructure in this country is just not ready for it. And you saw the freeze and how many of these EVs were not able to function during that time. I was really, really close to getting an EV. And then the, the storm happened and the freeze down here. And I realized there's just no way I could do it. Um, plus, I just like to be able to go and not have to stop. But right. Yeah. The, the range anxiety doesn't work for you. Hey, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's talk yep. a little bit about utilities because when we talk about Tesla, we talk about some of those equities on the EV side. There seems to be a uh, supply and demand starting to balance itself out. You talked like it was overhyped. So on the alternative, are utilities then undervalued? And what specific ones are you looking at in terms of stocks here? Yeah, so the ones that I'm looking at, and I do believe that they're under uh, recognized let's put it that way because okay. they had a really terrible 2023 and most people go to whatever you know that uh, the bright shiny uh you know light is and right mm -hmm. now utilities is not a bright shining light but it will be at the end of 2024 mark my word people are going to be talking about how well utilities did and i believe hawaii electric has just been beat up beyond recognition it went from 40 dollars down to 10 and now it's selling at around 13. Even though they cut their dividend uh, and got rid of that dividend, I don't think that the lawsuits are gonna amount to uh, that much. And I do believe Hawaii Electric will reinstate their dividend once things get structured a little stronger. I also like Dominion Energy and uh, Duke Energy and PPL. Those are a couple that I really like a lot. And uh, I think that the natural gas price being dropped as much as it has is going to, again, create a windfall for them. Interesting. I mean, geopolitically, we have tensions in the Red Sea. We're looking at the oil market, and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere very quickly. So are you calling that this year is going to kind of be a maintain on that utilities and energy side? Yes, I do. I, I believe that, you know, you're going to see energy prices remain about where they are, you know, barring any kind of war that happens in Taiwan. Uh, that could happen in Taiwan, I should say. Uh, mm -hmm. But I just believe the supply and demand uh, issues are pretty stable at this point. But from an electric utility standpoint, nat gas prices have dropped so much, and they continue to drop. Uh, in, a, in addition to that, coal has dropped quite a bit. And you know, those, those, both of those uh, energy sources have been... Uh, What's the best way of putting it? They, they've already been accounted for in the balance sheets of these utilities. And, right. and I think that start to see them come in lower, you're going to see a profit margin that you weren't going to see prior to those prices dropping. Interesting. So do you think, what will the earnings look like here? I mean, you know, demand is not going anywhere. We saw it, as you mentioned, during these cold bits of weather throughout North America, obviously increased demand. So should we be buying energy? Or you're saying kind of Hawaii Electric looks interesting because after the fire that took place, the catastrophic fire in Hawaii, that seems to be undervalued from $40 down to 10? 
Yes, and that, that's one of the reasons I would be looking at the electric, you, the, the Hawaii Electric. That's why I look at Hawaii Electric. But I also look at these others because of the dividends. They're looking at around 35 to 4% income plus the potential for growth that's going to come as a result of earning surprises. And, um, and, and I really, truly believe that that's the place to be putting money. And I could put it there in my sleep right now. I don't worry about it whatsoever. Southern Company, PPL, Duke, Dominion, uh, Nexera, both, all of those are really well-positioned utility companies that are going to do very well throughout the rest of 2024. Okay, so let's talk about 2024 and your forecast for the, the broader market here. I mean, you're representing billions of dollars worth of investments with clients that you represent. When you look towards putting that money into safe havens or safe areas, obviously utilities you explained, but do you see that the market will have a positive trajectory this year overall? I, I do. Um, I think once you get past the Magnificent Seven and you look at the rest of the S&P 500, you're going to see that the market is trading right now at a pretty normal PE level. And, and I do believe that we're going to see as interest rates have dropped, you're going to start to see profit margins increase. You're going to, you know, at the end of the year, you see earnings estimates come down. So they start at the beginning of the year really high. And as they get towards the end of the year, estimates get lower. I think that this year is going to be different. I think we're going to see we're going to see an increase in estimates towards the end of the year. And that's going to be brought on because of the lower interest rates. And you're, you're, you're not going to worry so much about the credit quality as you are about the earnings expectations for these companies. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And we're going to keep an eye, obviously, on the Fed. It was marched in for March. Will it become April, like you called? Uh, before I let you go, Ed, any other emerging trends that you see as possible good investments uh, good investment opportunities for 2024. Investors always looking for guidance here in this market. Yeah, I would look at the emerging markets. Um, there's a there's an ETF by the symbol EMQQ that I really liked, uh, and there's also one called FMQQ, and they're both uh, invested in the internet in emerging markets, and I really like both of those. They're very well run. They've been beat up, and I think they're going to do very well this next year. Yeah, interesting. Uh, you know, it's so much conversation I heard on the earnings call yesterday with Apple, AI, AI, AI. Is this the year for AI? And will it touch these overvaluated companies, or will it keep them just where they kind of are? I think AI is going to end up being part of businesses. I don't think you can make a lot of money just investing in an AI company. I think it's going to be come part of it. So when you talk about Apple, you know, Apple might, you know, take advantage of AI, but you can't have a separate business, just AI. Um, mm -hmm. We're actually coming out with some funds that are, or some strategies that are AI driven. Uh, and we're going to be launching those pretty soon. But at the same time, I think that AI is going to, you know, find its way into many businesses. And those businesses are are going to be better off and they're going to cut a lot of employment as a result of AI. Uh, and, and I think that that's going to be a real positive. I think AI is going to be around for a long time. It's going to make businesses leaner and meaner uh, and, and more driven for earnings, uh, you know, help, helping with earnings than hurting earnings. Yeah. Yeah. You said it best. I don't think it's going anywhere for a long time too. Well, the Year of Utilities, Ed Batowski, Managing Partner at Chapwood Investments, joining us today to break it all down. Thanks for joining us, Ed. Appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm Jeremy Safford with Kitco News. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the late breaking news. And we will see you next time.